I had played in a brass quintet for a long time, and I won't say I was sick of it, but there's a limit to what you can do with a brass quintet. I think just sitting in orchestra for all those years and sitting in brass groups all those years and listening to groups and being interested in world music and jazz and I mean it's all just music to me and well how does that work? It's kind of like the guy who takes apart the lawnmower. CDs are a little passe these days, everybody downloads tune at a time but for a Christmas CD I think people want something to stick in the player and listen to a mood. Mostly for local fans, it's a way that they can take a bit of clarion home without having to feed us all, which is a really good thing. Basically, we just want to capture a great live performance because clarion sounds great live. Christmas and brass go together great. The two moods, really introspective and peaceful, and then the joyous, happy, celebratory kind of stuff, and brass does both of those well. We're talking about like the soloists, um, if I'm in the future, Kirk or Holly or whatever, that I said, well, what do you want to do? Um, what's a tune that means something to you so that I can, we can connect because uh, they follow orders and do something. But you know, Kirk, for instance, picked Merry Christmas, Darling, the Karen Carpenter tune, which was written by her brother, um, which is not one I would have picked and not something, oh, that's my favorite song ever. But it's actually a really nice ballad and it's very very well crafted and it works very very well for high trombone it's just you know the jazz trombone thing and so we we just put it in the sweet spot for him and he loves it you know he thinks of his wife who wasn't his wife the first time he played it it was kind of a postcard to her for being away and so um, stuff like that but it, you know it gives special meaning to the players which the audience doesn't know So I'm recording Merry Christmas Darling, which the Carpenters made famous on their album Christmas Portrait from 1977. Um, I'm really, really excited to be recording this tune for a couple reasons. Um, Karen Carpenter is a hero of mine. Um, it's, it's a little bit of a, a, a closet thing for me. I, it, it seems sappy and unmanly, but um, I, I really love her singing. She had a gorgeous voice, and what she does rhythmically I think is, is just fantastic. A lot of creativity is, there's nothing really, really new. It's taking the old stuff and recombining it in ways people haven't done yet. So the more familiar the carol is, uh, the more latitude I can take. I can really go wild on Jingle Bells, because everybody knows Jingle Bells. We can do the wild sleigh ride version. Well, adjectives to describe Williams' music, uh, clever, atypical, <laughs> a little bit scary, quixotic, quirky, <laughs> beautiful and quirky, <laughs> intelligent. <laughs> Challenging. As William often jokes, um, the 4-4 button is broke on his computer. It's really unique. I would say it takes Christmas ideas and runs far from the original intent. And uh, I mean, you'll hear hints of the melody. Silent Night's a great example because we hear you'll hear hints of the melody and it plays with the melody, but it's pretty far. If you think you're going to sing along with Silent Night, you're, <laughs> or if you think you're going to sing along with Jingle Bells, you're at the wrong concert. Do you guys have any? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, the one. The, we just finished Jingle Bells, which sounds like the hardest thing to play, but it's actually not because with all the activity and stuff, it kind of covers up. You know, the hardest thing to play was the one we did yesterday that was just all exposed and sustained and, and yeah. Silent Night. Silent Night, thank you. I think that was maybe the hardest thing that we've done today. Silent Night is a bit of a throwdown for brass. It's like, okay, you got 12 brass and percussion. Silent Night, what were you thinking? You know, it's just kind of nuts to do it. But to say, okay, we're never really going to state the whole song so it's clear to hear 
It's kind of like a magic eye version for um, Rasquire that if you try to listen too hard, you won't get it, but if you just let it wash over you, you will hear the tune. on my shelf that I'm going to come back 10 or 20 years from now and listen to it and probably smack myself upside the head and say, what were you thinking? So in my preparation for this, I've tried to give myself as few reasons, you know, few, I, yeah, give, give future Kirk as few reasons to slap himself upside the head, um, thereby saving me some pain. So, so that's part of it. I think there's a little more pressure just internally, you know, with the live performance, it's, it's there, it's done, and you know, that's it. But this is, you know, this is for the ages. You, will. you know, automatons that could play every note perfectly and stuff, it wouldn't be the same as having personality in the group. So that's, uh, that's what I'm writing for and that's what I'm hoping for. But it's about the joy of the season. Some people come to it with very religious, you know, this is Christmas to me, and some people it's just it's shopping and Santa Claus and stuff like that, and I'm not gonna come down on you know, either side. I think it's a really happy, joyous season, and we wanna be able to be that for, for people. You know, obviously, if you don't want your Christmas music messed with, this is not the group for you, because we're gonna mess with stuff and have some fun, but, you know, it's all in a happy, respectful way, I, I hope. I'd like to issue a public apology to my neighbors for practicing extremely loud with the door open. Santa Claus is coming to town in the middle of June. There, I said it. <laughs> oh, okay. This is all I gotta say. Okay. Horns are amazing. Well, yeah, we knew that. Horns are flawless. My friend. <laughs> I think it's very important to get in the mood to record a Christmas album in the summer. So I've been drinking a lot of, you know, hot butter drums, um, hot toddies, peppermint schnapps in my coffee every morning, um, which I, I believe has made me a more complete musician in the recording of this oh. Christmas album. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.